new premier partner, Snickerdoodle. They're putting 1 million DGen into supporting Farcaster's growth where your voice matters. Take their surveys, earn DGen, and help build the future of this platform. It's simple. Head to Snickerdoodle's Share to Earn channel, find and take the surveys, share them, and claim your rewards. Let's help shape this space together. And welcome Snickerdoodle to the GM Farcaster family. GM Farcaster. It is a very Monday of Mondays, um, September 9th. Trying not to get the date messed up, but there we go. Uh, September 9th, and here we are. And for 29 minutes of Farcaster News to start your day, and we might actually hit that timing. Let's see. <laughs> Let's um, see what we can do today. My <laughs> money is on us not hitting the timing. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Let's see how we do. GM, um, everybody. <laughs> GM. Uh, we were just saying it's a little quieter, but also there's a ton of links. So, you know, <laughs> both things can be true. Um, this is from Dan. So Farcon Asia is happening next week. Very exciting. So Farcon Asia is taking place on September 17th at the prestigious Arts House in Singapore. With welcome drinks on September 16th, Far Hack and Token 2049 are happening at the same time. Catch fireside chats with Jesse Pollock, DWR, and Ted. And then there is some links to sign up. And this from Dan. I'll be doing a fireside chat at Farcon Asia next week. Shout out to the Taco team for organizing a 500 person event in Singapore. I'm assuming that Dan is zooming in. Um, you don't have to assume. That. My video. <laughs> That's a fact. That's a fact. I'm like, there's no way he's going live. But even he's coming in by video is a pretty big deal because he yeah. generally, for everything he says, he's not going to be there. So he is going to be there. So that's exciting. Uh, that is one that I am definitely having some FOMO on, although like there is no way I could do that. It's just too far. But this is when I always say, like, when oh. teleportation, because I'm ready. Just do something. I'm, like, just do something. I'm so ready. To snap. <laughs> Just like yeah. click your heels and you're there. Yeah. Dan doesn't go to crypto conferences. Yeah. You you can convince him sometimes to show up to a right. Farcaster event. Exactly. Sometimes. Sometimes. Many, many times though. And he was at the uh, Farcaster Fridays. All the fun stuff happening there. So that was good. Um, speaking of, let's jump right to that. Uh, we had some fun with Farcaster Fridays here. We did a URL version. And thank you, Miriam. It was so fun. So hung out with Miriam. We did have links pop in for like a half a minute uh, to say hello um, before all his all his Toronto crew showed up. And this was really fun. So we did do a little uh, mushy cam pick here of our online. And I did have fun with stickers. So you can find a lot more of the pictures from Farcaster Friday on the Moshi Cam app. Um, this is from Ted. Ah, so lucky. Love this community. Thank you to everyone who came out to the inaugural Farcaster Fridays in Venice. Crazy. The first meetup was here a couple years ago. Here's a small part of the crew and DWR and V were there along with a whole bunch of other lucky folks in that area. So that one looked like a great one to be at. Um, but there's a ton of fun pictures inside the Farcaster Fridays um, channel. So there was a lot of great events. I was, I was like kind of wishing I had gone in person to the Miami event, but I knew it was going to be um, just a little difficult for me to pull that off. So I did have fun online with Miriam. We did talk about that next time we definitely need to have an activity going like poker or something um, or tabletop and like actually do something to make it more interactive. So next time, but also I loved um, the New York crew looked like they had a blast. Like that one looked really fun. Here's another picture from LA. Um, the Miami crew was a much bigger meetup than I anticipated. So that was pretty cool. Um, the uh, There was another really cool one in Bangalore. This was Paris. 
Um, so they were happening all over the world. The Tokyo one looked like a blast. They were like singing and stuff. There was a whole bunch of fun things going on. So go check out the Farcaster Fridays channel um, and you'll see a whole bunch of other um, pictures in there. So Has anyone ever successfully done karaoke virtually or does, does that have to be an in-person thing for it to work? I feel like it was done during um, COVID. Successfully, and then never again. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think it was done during COVID. We did talk about, I did mention to um, Miriam and also uh, Sheik Bangs, uh, we were in replies about we could do like a DJ set and have it be like pass the mic with DJ Cassidy. That was something that launched during COVID mm. where he would pass the mic to all these different hip hop like legends and it was really cool and it was all done on zoom and it was a lot of fun so we could do something like that it'd be fun nice we'll figure out something for next time that makes the url one a little bit more fun um this from cassie the alts are um the alts are having a good time so when parody caster were the only users posts that show up are the alts i think this would be actually this seems like a good opportunity for another client <laughs> so <laughs> Already cast her when. Um, and this is coming from the Saroon uh, diss track. There is a Saroon diss track. Um, I'm not going to play it, but also the rap battle has started and uh, Kevin MFR made this actually into a song. So go check that out. Uh, the alts are having rap battles. How fun. Uh, this from Trisol, we're down to seven, the steadfast seven, and sadly, Naomi has dropped off the list. Um, I'm sure she'll be back, but she needed a, re everybody needs a recovery day. You need a, <laughs> it was a recovery day. Exactly. But the curious hermit, Alina Ferry, Trisol, uh, Murtaza, six, Kackers and Ted are still hanging in there. Um, so they have earned top reward every day still hanging in. So right. congrats I liked, to them. I like the curious hermit, I think, who said, this is a club you cannot join. You can only get kicked out of. <laughs> you can all, that's that's very true. Uh you can only you can only get dropped and sadly we did lose somebody. So it is oh bias was the last one we lost. Oh no. Sadly. Sadly sadly. Um moving on uh, I did want to mention a couple of the other amazing folks who do media around Farcaster. And if you haven't been catching OK Banger, you really need to. And it's, it has been on Tuesdays and Thursdays, varying times. So please go check that out. But also the recording is available. Uh, go check out the OK Banger uh, channel and you can see all the past episodes in there. And the last one was on right. So they've been doing like a theme each time and then pulling casts that relate to that theme. I missed this one. I do have to go back and watch it. I watched the one that was story and it was really good. So be sure to take a look at those. And also we have a new many such cases. I made the mistake of logging into Warpcast. That was a mistake. It was a mistake. Um, it makes things much slower to load. I should not have done that. So another many such cases, exploring blocks, boosts, warp cast rewards, mini apps and channels with lots of throwbacks to the early days. Uh, so there you go. Go check that out uh, on all the places you get your podcasts. I was just listening to this one um, as I was driving my kiddo to school today. So have you been exploring the other media besides us? Of course. <laughs> The only thing I want to do is make and listen to Farcaster Media. I, I and I, it's like kind of crazy how much media I am consuming at this moment. Like in, and I'm, in time. Yeah. And I'm also like only touching the surface because there's so many other ones yeah. that I have not been able to listen to. Yeah, there's a ton. Um, there's there's a lot out there for sure. And there's a lot happening now on Far House and on Tavern. So make sure you're checking out those audio only spaces as well. And they're pretty good. Most, some of them are late night for me. So I sometimes get there, but many times I miss those because of that. Yeah. Um, but they're And they fun. tend to be live, non-recorded kind of right. um, conversations. Yeah. A little um, different, it, but it's like if you different. want Farcaster content, 
there's really, it's like an infinite supply. You just, it just takes a little effort to find it. Exactly. Yeah. But there is, it's, I'm really excited and happy to see this growing. Um, and because also with the ones on Tavern and um, <clears throat> Farhouse, you also, I think it's a great way to connect with other folks and meet folks in sort of a different kind of way. So those conversations have been really interesting. So I definitely encourage everybody to check those out. Um, so, late night cruise wait, if it's one, not in your and time then zone. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm going to talk to Re here. I have a suggestion for you. You should start your own opportunity for your own media. Opportunity <laughs> for your own media. Find some friends, get on Far House, and talk about Farcaster. That's all you got to do. There you go. There you go. Um, you know, we are one of the few that is very European friendly, I have to say. So that's why we tend to, we're not necessarily West Coast friendly, but we are European friendly. Uh, this is from Fred Wilson. This is a great opportunity if you're building a consumer crypto um app or anything in consumer crypto. If you're building a consumer web three app and plan to be in New York city on September 30th, consider demoing it at our second consumer crypto demo night. This is USV and variant are hosting the second iteration of our consumer crypto demo night on September 30th. If you're a builder and consumer and you're interested in attending or dem demoing up here. So I'd love to see some Farcaster folks who are creating Things in consumer crypto jump in here. Um, that would be really cool to see them demonstrating. This is from Kyle. So there's been a lot of like interesting little, I don't know, probably let's call it engagement farming. Let's call it what it is. But uh, but also has been really interesting to see how things turn out. And this was one of them from Kyle Patrick, GM repliers. Happy weekend. Question of the day, which NFT would you rather have? Uh, and this was Board API Club, Nouns, Azuki, and Pudgy Penguins. And the, the bias is so strong. It's hilarious. Because there's no way that this question asked on Twitter would be the same answer or probably anywhere else. There's absolutely no way that Nouns comes out at top. But I, so I found this amusing. Um, probably I would think that if you ask this question on Twitter, Pudgy Penguins is going to blow it away. And the rest of us are going to be hanging in the hanging in the in the shadows. Um, so I thought that was that was fun. That was a fun one. Um, this from Mark Fishman. This was in similar vein, a uh, a little bit of a nice fun engagement thing. What's the first concert you ever went to? This morning, my girlfriend asked Alexa to play some fun music, and it started playing "Fun" the band, which triggered memories of going to their concert in high school. Uh, so I answered mine, Dawkin. <laughs> I don't know who Dawkin is. I'm in the, you don't even um, know who Dawkin is. I'm in the 91% who does not know who Dawkin is. Dokken. That's shocking. I thought at least you would know. Um, so yeah, they're a, uh, heavy metal band. Fantastic drum, uh, fantastic guitarist named George Lynch. Uh, but funny enough, that exact concert this is a very long, like long roundabout way of saying that I was at the same first concert as Bill Burr. Bill Burr, his first mm. concert was the same concert at the same venue on the same night. That's so, amazing. Kind of funny. Kind of funny. Um, yeah. So Dawkin, yeah, I would expect very few people to know that. So this was kind of a fun one just to look through and see what the answers are. Um, they were kind of fun. So go take a look at that. Aaron Carter and Britney Spears. Um, that's pretty funny. Yes to crypto. Oh. I would expect you would definitely know Dawkin. Like, I would be shocked if you didn't. Uh, this from Ted. Uh, why did I do this to myself today? Come on, load. Uh, notice no one really gets the classic tramp stamp anymore. Lower back. So what do you think the 2024 tattoo placement equivalent is? And I took this opportunity to point out so what you're saying is one of my tattoos is now a historic artifact. <laughs> By the way, it was not called a tramp stamp when I got it. <laughs> so, there well, you I'm pretty sure like the reason no one's getting them is somehow now they're called tramp stamps. Like that's what happens, right? Like they... Yeah. 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 Exactly. Like, why okay. would you? Um I did think this was funny. I saw someone on X say the spiritual equivalent of the tramp stamp is lip filler. 
So I think that's funny. Maybe. Um, just fun, fun things people are talking about on Farcaster at the moment. Um, this oh, from Zach. I'm sorry, but also uh, like, let's just stop commenting on women's bodies and <laughs> no. like, just let us do whatever we want. Okay. So. Leave us, leave us be with our lip filler and our tramp stamps. We're fine. Leave us alone. Um, this from Zach, they say you're a product of the top five people you spend the most time with, but I think this also applies to parasocial relationships. The more you read or listen to somebody online, the more you start to sound like them too. And this was in response to Jake. I always think it's interesting when people are remarkably similar in how they speak and sound. I told Matthew the other day he sounded sounds just like Bezos. DWR and Fersham sound similar. Dillian and Rebos. Zuck has a hint of teal. A buddy of mine sounds just like Rick Rubin. It feels like there's something to it. So I don't know about the sound, but I think sometimes I, I think it's interesting to think about this in terms of the parasocial relationships. Um, and those being essentially the people that you're listening to, connecting with online, and um, whether or not that is true. So I think that probably is. And I think I get more influence now by my online friends than I do by my IRL ones at the moment. Um, just because I spend a lot more time with you crazy lunatics than I do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> by choice. And by you know choice. what? <laughs> And I'm better so my, for it. <laughs> you may. We didn't talk about our backgrounds, but yeah, we did. That. Um, I have in my background the a two by two grid that is showing a agency optimist, um, and the top left is the high agency um, optimists. And I think those are the people we're spending a lot of our time with. I think it's good. I, I don't mind. Be, I don't really mind being influenced by optimists. Who? Oh, there it is. Yeah. 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 I think that, um, yeah, I think this also related to, um, I saw some discussion about, you know, there's a lot of discussion about the hopium and the copium and all that right now. Um, and whether or not our optimism is just cope and that kind of thing. But I, I, I agree. I'd much rather be in a place where people are, um, you know, thinking positive, being optimistic. Like, why would I want to be somewhere where it's pessimistic? There's a little, way too much of that in the world. So, yeah, I like this. I love this little grid. This is really good. Horse facts. If you're not following horse facts, like, you're missing out tremendously. Like, can't can't stress that enough. Because um, I do think that uh, he is very funny, probably one of the alts, and <laughs> also, like, just very it's very witty very witty so yeah follow him if you're not what are you doing with your life um, um this shout is out really interesting prof just from, i i can't oh, sorry, go ahead. sorry i can't pull it on this screen but just shout out naomi in our chat good thing i stopped listening to most crypto podcasts because <laughs> most crypto podcasts are not are a little negative not, not really positive yeah. yeah yeah not always Agreed. positive um, this was super interesting. This is from Zero X Luo. According to a recent R Network report on on chain social, Open Social, Farcaster, DSCVR, and Lens are the top four on chain social protocols with 250K plus combined daily active users. I had never heard of two of these. So DSCVR.1 is new to me and is closely tied to Solana as a social network. This is the same. I was like, I'd never heard of this one. And it's probably because I'm not active on uh, Solana. And then opensocial.co may also be unfamiliar to many. It has raised 26 million and recently partnered with BNB chain to build a social graph and on-chain identity. The competition between chains and social protocols is heating up with many chains seeing social graphs as key to their growth and aiming to make social protocols the foundation for their project communities. So this was really interesting, and it was interesting to see the daily active user um, comparison uh, that Farcaster is number two on this list. Um, and I was very surprised. I thought that Lens and Farcaster had a closer, like I thought they were about the same or that Lens had more uh, users. So that was surprising to me. Um, 
and ple pleasantly surprising to me <laughs> for various reasons. <laughs> so, oh. yeah, yeah. What do you think? Okay. Thoughts? Thoughts? Um, the the only thing I'll, I like to just ground myself in when we talk about the competition amongst decentralized socials yeah. um, is that the real competition is actually not between decentralized social, but against corporate networks. Boo. Yes. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah. Boo. We don't like them. So, um, and if you put these numbers, obviously, against any existing Web2 platform, you wouldn't even see the colors. They would just be tiny little pixels. And Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Totally. Uh, yeah. We're not but, anywhere near. We're not anywhere near like the regular, like the Web2 social media. Yeah. Not even anywhere close. There are um, millions and millions every day, daily active users. So we are but a drop in the bucket. But this was... Uh, and it is. I like to look at data compared to kind of perception as well. Because... Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. see, going back to what we just talked about in terms of like the information you're getting on your feed is kind of what, what you'll believe. So if you see maybe someone talking about lens a lot, you might think everyone is on lens and yeah, maybe they're not. Maybe they and are. Maybe they're not. Maybe they are. And maybe they're on open social, which I had never heard of before. So, and that to me says a lot about like how many pockets there are within crypto and even culturally speaking, because oftentimes you know, it might be, maybe this is bigger in uh, the East or something like that. So um, especially if it's BNB chain or that there's a whole on-chain social that's Solana related. Had no idea just because I'm not active in Solana. So good to know that there's all these other uh, attempt our experiments with on-chain social. It's great. So fantastic. And this from Beta Shop. One moment, please. While we load. Should we do a voiceover? We're, we're looking at a white screen. We're looking at a white screen. We're and it's an not. internet browser oh, yeah. that's a white no. screen. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna switch that off until I can get it to actually come up. We'll uh move to something else instead. Um does anyone else maybe. so if, so here's a question then while we're waiting. If while you use waiting. the web app, is it slow for you? Does it ever hang? And if it does, please give that feedback to Merkle team so I'm not the yeah. only one. This happens often. Um when I'm doing this because I have so many links open. So it's not really, um, you know, I don't know if it's really their fault as much as my fault. It's <laughs> totally their to fault. Have so many, have so many links need to, open at the same time. Of course it's their fault. Why would it be our fault? We need to be able to open at least Multiple. 50 links at the same time. We're... I mean, like I, I can't get anything to open right now. Um, and it's totally because I know it's because I'm logged in as well. So that is the problem on my end. Uh, but anyway, uh, so hopefully I can get this to come up, but I could just go back. The only thing that's coming up Do for you... me right now, this is really funny. I think this is, this is horse, I think horse facts is behind all of this. This is the only thing that I can get to load right now. <laughs> right. He's like <laughs> literally li in the office listening <laughs> To our stream being like, okay, I'll make sure my stuff comes up. <laughs> and that's it. Yeah, yeah. Only his, and that's it. Um, yeah, because I can't get anything else to uh to load right now, which is pretty funny. Um do, you know, do you want me to happens. read you? Shall you find yeah. beta shops and, and read it out loud? <laughs> Go, ahead. Go ahead, I'll just drop it in the uh, it, chat. We'll drop a couple things in the chat. It's pretty it funny. It might take a minute for me to find just, it. See what I mean? Oh, like yeah okay this, this isn't um, easy you guys think this is easy it's not easy it's kind of easy uh it should be easier i found it's it my bad. oh good can you okay. pull that up i'll just yeah, start so dropping links into the chat beta, and you can pull them up <laughs> yeah so um our friend beta shop said forecaster is a magical place while the network is still relatively small it's the throughput is already massive Case in point, Farcaster members have transacted 1.6 billion Moxie on 6 million fan tokens in the past 40 days. That's massive wow. numbers for a network with tens of thousands of active users. Frames are not even a year old. We are still very early. Yeah. And I think that's the special thing that we see on Farcaster is how quickly you can develop different projects and have them really take off has been pretty fun and exciting. So 
If you can bring up a couple of those links I just dropped to you in the private chat, we can at least grab a couple more before we uh, before we call it. Um, there was a couple more things that I did want to talk about, but I don't know if we can bring those up. Um, one was uh, Jacob was discussing, it was along the lines of your background as well and the copium versus hopium. So if you can pull that up, that'd be great because okay. right. I can't get it to come We're up. We're doing this. Are, are we doing this? This is when uh -huh. we let Adrian share links. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. Awesome. There seems to be somewhat widespread meme that 2025 is a bull market year. I don't really remember similar memes for 2017 or 2021. Can't tell if this is collective cope or if there is any weight to all this prediction. Um, and then the comments were, you know, it's copium, it's hopium, um, the bull market in 2025. So I saw some discussion of this cast on Twitter and it was, uh, the feeling was, well, maybe you can look at it as copium. Maybe some of us need copium <laughs> because <laughs> those of us who aren't, well, I think the comment was those of us who aren't well-funded by VCs. Uh, need to hang on to the copium at the moment. So what do you think? Um, I think that there's been a lot of discussion of whether or not the four year cycle is, is uh, going to hold or not. Um, I also saw a whole bunch of statistics regarding 2026 being the next actual macroeconomic bull year, if you will, uh, for various reasons and all kinds of analysis around that. So I don't know. I mean, I really don't know, but I, you know, I'm not loving the current downturn. I mean, it's not making my life easy, but also September tends to dip as well. Mm -hmm. And that's a pretty normal uh, trend over time that like happens every year. I think a lot of it's related to tax losses and things like that. So I don't know. What do you think? Want to hear my hot take for I do. this Monday morning? All right. So unless you are actively trying to raise a round from, let's say, venture, it doesn't effing matter. Like raising <laughs> money is absolutely easier in a bull market than it is mm -hmm. otherwise. That mm -hmm. is, I think that is the only thing. Otherwise, just make something people want to pay money for. Yeah. And that is it. And I think the most talented people, and not even in crypto, in any, like literally any industry, like they they do well regardless of the cycle. And um, most of us in our lives, like it, it, it shouldn't and doesn't matter. Yeah. And if I you're think relying that... on a cycle, right? Like if you're kind of relying on like momentum to carry you, like when the tide goes out, we see who's left standing and it's people who aren't really making things that anyone wants. Yeah. And we've been, um, those of us who've been here, you know, through this current bear market or the past bear market or whatever you want to call it, like we, we've stuck around this whole time, like we're not going anywhere, but also it's whether or not there's new folks coming in. And right now that's not happening, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. But you're right. It's going to come down to, are we making pe things people want? And are interested in and doing or solving problems that are, um, you know, that's always the other, the other thing, for sure. So, uh, can you bring up that last cast, and we'll uh, we'll close it out with a little bit of uh, fun from from Matthew and crew. If you can grab um, that one, let's. There we go. Um, this was a comment from, uh, six, six had a little meme here. Can you explain this gap in your resume? I thought that was when I thought it was the Bitcoin super cycle and Matthew's comment was, uh, I was building random stuff on this thing called Farcaster. Have you heard of it? Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> my resume is pretty weird as it is. Can I just, just tell better. people though, there's not a, there shouldn't be a gap in your resume. Everything you're doing on Farcaster is very transferable onto professional resumes. And if you're having trouble articulating what these skills are, contact me because I can be your coach and you can absolutely put this on your resume and make it stand out. Like you're doing there real we go. work. You're doing you're... real work. <laughs> what was I doing? I was casting on, uh, on Farcaster. That's what I was doing. 
Okay. Before we leave for today, I want to just mention our schedule for this week, which I totally uh, messed up a little bit, but uh, redid it. Um, we have on Wednesday, we're going to have a special guest popping on, Carrie Louise, a stand-up comedian who's launching a new stream, good friend of mine who's going to pop by, and we're going to ask her about why she's not on Farcaster, um, but actually probe a little bit as to folks who have larger um, followings elsewhere, what can we do to get them here? Then Friday, we have our episode 155. It's our one year anniversary show. We're going to start at 8.30 a.m. Eastern, and we're going to go right through to the following day on Saturday, September 14th. Uh, so we're going to do a 24-hour stream, and it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have a lot of different things happening throughout the day. We'll be reaching out to a lot of you, especially our regular chatters, to join us um, in the morning to uh, do a little trivia. We're gonna have a lot of fun things happening. So look for more information on that coming later this week. And that is it for me. Anything else, Adrian, before we head out of here? Um, first of all, I apologize for my background, which is tweaking out. And just, I it's just look a little weird today. Yeah, I'm cool. super glitchy. Um, how do you feel about coming to a year? Um, shocked, I think is the first word. Um, especially if I think back to how many times I, we almost quit or I almost quit. I don't know about you, but <laughs> it wasn't, quit. wasn't a win. Whoa. I almost quit many times. <laughs> Every time during the first like two months that I would have a technical problem, especially when we were using OBS, I would start to have a little meltdown and go, why am I doing this? This is so hard. What am I, why am I doing this? Um, and then you know, just kept pushing through. And I think some, so I think that says a lot about when you found something in general, like that's a common feeling, right? Of like, mm -hmm. just surviving is a huge win. <laughs> so we made it this far is pretty impressive. Um, and looking at, you've been prepping a highlight reel and looking at that highlight reel just made me smile over and over again. And it was amazing to see how much we've accomplished in a year. And I'm really excited to share all that with everybody on Friday. So yeah. it's going to be fun. Yeah. And I, there's no place I'd rather be right now, but it's pretty amazing that not only are we still here, but that we've grown this like from, you know, one audience member to <laughs> everything we have right now um, on any given day, we can have over, you know, hundreds or we don't even know. Um, and then, I, uh, just that we're actually able to do this full time now. So it's pretty amazing. How are you feeling? Amazing. Um, yeah. And I realized I could talk about this all day, but maybe we'll save it for Friday. Maybe we'll save it for the live stream on Friday. Yeah. But I was kind of thinking I was, so I've been working on this high highlight reel and looking at, and I just remember like hitting certain episodes. Like, I can't believe we did 25. Like that felt yeah. like a milestone or and and yeah. so now somehow coming to a year feels like somewhat anticlimactic. It's like, oh, oh, we've done a hundred. Sure, it's a year. Well, of course, of course, we would have gotten here. Um, yeah, but it the, kind of feels just, like yeah, you just keep going and you get there. Yeah, right. Just, like, sure, it's just, just another. Survive. It's just a Friday. Yeah. And a Friday. Um, the just going back to I can't believe we did this before permissionless. Like yeah. we did this when the network was really small. Tiny. So less than yeah. a thousand daily, like less than a thousand daily active users. Oh. And we, somehow there was more than enough to talk about. And um, we're now grabbing, yeah, to, to have a few hundred people the, watch the, the daily the, show the, now. It's like weird to yeah. think about. The OG token came out in October of last year. So that was, you know, a month and I think it was well over a month after we started and that was only 938 people. Yeah. Right. So like th that's who was active on the platform at that time. And to see like where, where we're at now, it's pretty crazy. So here we are. Who was the uh, one audience member? I'm not telling. I'm not telling. Um, because that is going to be a trivia question on Friday. So, so Zach, you'll have to, uh, you'll have to figure that out on your own. I'm not telling, <laughs> but there was one, there was actually, I think the first episode may have had two. 
but I know there was at least one member and I think there was one who was active, active in the chat and another who was watching, um, who told me later they were watching. So, um, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll share that on Friday. We've got lots of fun little things to share on Friday. Uh, and with that, we're going to call it here. Have a lovely, lovely day. I'm not going to tell you. Uh, Zach's now guessing random people. <laughs> you'll, we'll answer on Friday. <laughs> we'll answer on Friday. You'll know on Friday. Um, and I'm really looking forward to um, sharing. Like the highlight reel is really, really fun. And uh, we have a lot of fun things that we'll be doing on Friday. So just uh, get ready. Buckle up. It's going to be fun. And with that, we're going to call it here. Everybody have a lovely, lovely Monday. And we will see you on Wednesday for another fun show. And with that, everybody, bye-bye. Oh,